So today's DIY lesson is about using a Wagner power sprayer. This is real, this is raw. I am literally about to paint the walls down here in my basement. Everything is primed and ready. But I wanna show you the reality of using a paint sprayer. If I was doing this project outside, I would not necessarily have on my little paint suit. But being that I am in the basement, there is not a lot of ventilation and it's a closed space, I am putting on the paint suit. It just eliminates overspray on my clothes. So um, these are like 10 bucks, definitely worth the investment. Just know that they only come extra large, so I'm swimming in this thing. Now, I also have a mask because it is imperative that you mask up when you are doing a paint sprayer indoors because the paint particulates do become airborne. You don't wanna be sucking this in. So make sure you have a mask on, okay? So a few things that you need when you are ready to do your paint project. You're going to need your paint of choice. You're going to need your Wagner Power Sprayer. I am using the Flexio 2000 model. This is my favorite model. Um, again, Wagner's not paying me to do this. I do do demos on QVC for them, but they didn't ask me to do this. I just wanna show you how I actually use this at home. So here is the Wagner Power Head. This um, has two speeds. It's pretty powerful. An important thing is, as you're using your sprayer, you might notice that it doesn't have the same output. It doesn't seem to have the same power that it did in the first half hour. The filter gets clogged. It's sucking in the air to power it up. So you may have to open up here and take out this filter pad, this little filter medium. You can take it out, you can vacuum it, you can wash it um, and reuse it in between. So it, it's easy enough, you can scrape away the old paint. And when you clean this up, you'll get more performance as you work. So very easy to open this little pocket and clean out your filter. So that's the first thing I want you to know about your Flexio. All right, so set this aside. Now I have an extension cord because you know it has a three to four foot cord. So we've got extension cords on the ground. They will get paint on them, so just be aware. Now we have a few pieces here for the Flexio. We've got the cup where we put the paint. This holds a little less than a quart, so um, you'll be filling that. And then we have the nozzle tip. This is called the eye nozzle. So what we have here is this first little nozzle. You wanna make sure that this blade that controls the paint flow is facing on a horizontal plane. Then you're gonna take your tip and you're gonna put it in and you're gonna press it into place so that that little plastic tab we just saw fits in that gap, okay? So you put that on. Then you take your black ring and you're gonna tighten this. And you wanna hold this straight as you tighten. Just don't let, don't let that spin. And you wanna get this on really tight, okay? Now, we're gonna take this, which is the directional flow um, control. So the air gets blown through the side nozzles and then the paint comes through here. So it allows you to spray horizontal or vertical, depending on which direction you turn this. So let's snap this in. It's important that you get these yellow tabs behind this black ring, okay? If it's sitting up here, it's gonna spit and it's not gonna spray well. So make sure it's locked behind at the top and the bottom. Now you can spin this to change the direction of your paint flow. Okay, now on the top here, this is an important tool. This is your wide angle adjustment. So if I have it on the thin arrow, it means I have a narrow spray. If I turn it to the wide, I have a wider spray. So this gives you control over the flow of paint coming out. Now over here on this dial, you see it goes from one to 12, okay? and it spins around. This controls how much paint comes out based on the viscosity or the thickness of the paint. So if you are using a low viscosity product, like a stain or a sealer, you're gonna be in the two to four range. You wanna be down low, okay? If you're using a thicker paint, you're gonna turn this dial up to usually around 10. It is important that before you start painting your planned project that you paint on a scrap so that you know which is the right setting for the particular product that you were using. When I started to prime these walls, I was using a drywall primer and sealer. It was thinner than I expected. 
So when I started doing this, it started to um, collect and drip a little bit on the walls and I had to roll it and thin it out. So practice on uh, a piece of cardboard or an old chunk of wood before you go to your project so that you have all of your settings exactly how you want them before you start to paint. Now, the other thing that's important when you get this is that there's this little nut back here. Okay, you see this little nut? You wanna tighten that little nut as much as you can before you start painting. It will give you maximum pressure. So you can just grab a pair of pliers and you're gonna tighten that. If you want less pressure, you can, you can loosen it, but you wanna have this as tight as you can, okay? So give that a couple turns and it gives you more pressure. Now, we are going to attach this eye nozzle, as it's called, to our turbine or our motor. It has this um, easy technology. You just line it up and then click. So now it is attached. Again, we have an on-off button for the power. We have a speed button at the top. When I want more power, I leave it in the, the, the two uh, lines exposed. If you go like that, it's less pressure. So we want it with more pressure, okay? So that's pretty much everything on your um, Wagner gun. Now we're gonna fill our sprayer. These paints do not need to be thinned, okay? It is not important that you um, thin them. You can use them right out of the can. If you're using a dark color, paint is thicker than a white color. So the um, idea is you could put maybe a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon of water in the cup after you pour in the paint. I'm using a medium color. I'm gonna try it without, but you don't have to thin it, okay? So I'm gonna pour my paint in. The other thing is if you are using um, your sprayer in warm conditions, oh, how nice is this new bare paint with this little spout? Man, that's nice. Look at that, no mess. Um, if I am using, like I said, a darker color or I'm working outside and it's warm, I definitely will add a little bit of water just, just to help. So I'm gonna let this go. It's a nice um, viscosity, but definitely wanna stir it again, even though I just got the paint and it was stirred at the store. If you are using paint that has been sitting for a few weeks, even if it's been two, three weeks, doesn't matter, I would suggest that you take your paint back to the store and have them shake it in the machine because it'll really get the pigmentation all mixed up well so that you get um, a thinner product and just better outcome. So don't be afraid to take that over. Um, one part I'm missing, hold on. The spout. The spout goes on the bottom of the nozzle. And the beautiful thing about this is that you can put it in this way so that it'll face the back of the cup. That allows you to spray up so that you get what's in the bottom corner of your um, cup. Or you can turn it this way. And when you turn it this way, you can spray down and it gets everything in the bottom corner of the cup as you spray. So I'm gonna pop this off because it's much easier to turn it without it connected. And just thread this on. I always find it easier to hold it against me and thread it. That's why I love my paint suit because if it's got paint on it, I don't care and I can be messy. Make sure it's really snug because it creates the vacuum pressure system. Okay, now we put our nozzle back on, turn it on. Paint doesn't flow on this model until you pull the trigger. Some of the models, if you pull the trigger, it turns the blower on and the paint. This one is a two-step, power on and pull the trigger. Let's go paint a wall. Hold the sprayer six to eight inches away from the surface. Apply the paint with even passes overlapping as you go. It is easy, intuitive, and fun. Now be sure to subscribe and tell me about your Wagner paint sprayer experience in the comment section.